The Bank of Central Banks. Based in Basel, the BIS counts 60 central banks under its umbrella and it's armed with the task of ensuring financial stability. But to what extent has blockchain found its way into these financial institutions and how are central banks looking at digital currencies? Let's find out. Mr. Carstens, welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. Now, you once said in a speech, good technology does not suffice for good economics. In your view, is blockchain a good technology? Well, I think it's a good technology, but what really is critical is to which purposes or which end do you apply that technology. Uh, blockchain is very, very powerful. It really facilitates many aspects, uh, in particular how to follow a very detailed lecture in in almost instant time and that can have a very interesting applications in the financial markets. So the, the key really is in the details. You say it comes down to the purpose behind it. Regarding the conversation we are having about blockchain right now, do you feel that its impact has been overstated in economics? Well again, I think, I think that the, the applications of them or the, the, the potential applications of, of them might be overstated, in particular in terms of how ready these developments will be available. Uh, again, uh, one thing is to have the technology, the other is how to apply it. And oftentimes what has happened, especially in this debate about innovation and its applications into financial markets, I think, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the potential applications have gone far, far beyond of what really is proven to be feasible. So I think like, for example, in blockchain, the most immediate application was Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin promised to be, at least in the minds of some, to be a substitute for currencies. But once you, you subject a, the concept of Bitcoin into the scrutiny of what really money is and the uses it can have, and the really uh, practical experience that it has had, it has come far short of it. So I think that, that, that when you think about a, a technology, you think about, for example, blockchain, mm -hmm. uh, you really have to bring at an early, uh, at an early time of that project uh, financial considerations, regulatory issues, and see if it's compatible, the technology, with the economics. But every day we're confronted with a different news case from left and right. Yes. So where do you see the greatest value, economic value, coming from blockchain? That it can uh, actualize, it can bring uh, up to speed uh, very complex ledgers in very short period of time. It's a very powerful registrar. And, and well, of course, we know, we know that uh, in economics, what is key is to have adequate property rights, and that means to have an adequate registry. You know, if this is updated on a, on a, on a real-time basis, I think that's a tremendously powerful instrument. Uh, it can uh, facilitate uh, trading, it can facilitate exchanges, but it has to be done right. <laughs> At the moment, the BIS is setting up innovation hubs from Hong Kong, Switzerland to Singapore, and part of that includes a partnership with the Swiss National Bank. Mm -hmm. What was the pressure behind trying to create this innovation hub and especially to look at creating a central bank digital currency? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, uh, yes, uh, this is uh, really a key development here at the BIS. As you well said, uh, we, we, we here at the BIS uh, are uh, the bank of the central banks. We don't not only do banking, but also we do research and we foster collaboration among the members. Now, uh, all central banks are facing uh, the challenge of innovation and technological development. Uh, technological development is moving very, very fast and is moving in different parts of the world at the same time. It's very difficult for each single central bank to keep track of what is going out there. Uh, therefore, there are economies of scope and scale of bringing together the effort uh, and, and having a col collaborative approach into it. And therefore, whatever is happening in Singapore, in Hong Kong, in Europe, we will have the ability, hopefully, to detect it on time and incorporate it into our thinking about how could it affect central bank operations and the, and the functioning 
of the financial markets. Uh, what we hope is that relatively soon to have a, also a, a footprint in, in the Americas so that we can really talk about the global innovation hub. Right now, as you said, we will have presence in Europe, we will have presence in Asia. I think that the next step would be to have presence in the Americas too. Being the bank of the central banks, can you give us an idea of how many central banks around the world you think are trying to dabble into central bank digital currencies or at least have yes. it on the table? All of them are analysing it, are studying it. Uh, needless to say, there, again, as I said before, there are economies of scale in that study, in that analysis, how could it really work? I would say that the reality uh, that is out there uh, makes it difficult to make the case of moving extremely fast into putting central bank digital currencies on the table, in particular for retail uses. I see that as a very remote possibility in the near term. Probably one or two central banks might be there in the next five years, but not many. Uh, why? Because uh, the application of central bank digital currencies for the retail purposes is an extremely uh, demanding proposition and it has uh, very serious consequences for the functioning of the financial system. Therefore, it has to be studied quite in detail. And again, the case needs to be made for it to be necessary. So far, I don't think we have a case where a, a central bank digital currency for retail purposes is necessary. Many central banks are working on, on wholesale central bank digital currencies. There, the progress is far bigger. There is more experience. Uh, therefore, I think that the evolution in that field is probably uh, will be will be obvious uh, sooner rather than later. And to put that all in a nutshell, you're trying to say that central bank digital currencies are a good to have but not a must have. Yes, 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 yes. And timing is important and the reach of it is also very important. Speaking of timing, China has been ramping up efforts to create its own digital currency. Do you see any sort of snowball effect from that? What could be the ramifications if that does get off the ground? Well. Uh, you know, each country has its own problems, its, whole, its own challenges. Uh, you know, China has been at the forefront in many aspects uh, of technological development. I mean, for example, the big techs that we have been talking about for quite some time, uh, the most clear examples are in China. So, I mean, uh, uh, I, I don't see, I, I don't see any any issue for them moving forward in this, although uh, very precise plans are still not out there or not haven't been made public. Since we are having this conversation in Basel, Switzerland, I would yes. love to get your take on what's actually happening on home turf. There have been, of course, growing calls for the Swiss National Bank to come out with some sort of e-franc. Do you see that happening within the next five years? Well, I mean, something that is really relevant, something that we need to, to be aware of, is that the payment system in Switzerland is one of the most developed ones. I mean, if I, I mean, we have here representatives of all the world. We have central banks that come here very often. Uh, the payment system here is top notch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, I, if you ask yourself what what will be the impact on the experience of a household or, or of a business owner having a central bank digital currency, I would say there wouldn't be really be much much of a difference. Now, therefore, uh, it, it, the question is relevant. Do we really need it? From a user point of view, I think that is very difficult to make the case. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, uh, I mean, I, I think what the central bank is doing is appropriate, which is to continue working on the wholesale aspect of it into improving the function of it, working on the tokenization. And as a matter of fact, that will be one of the aspects that we will be developing in the hub center here in, in, in Basel slash uh, Zurich. Uh, but the move towards retail, I think, is, is not even certain that is necessary or that it will come in the foreseeable future. So, I mean, I think, I think I underline the issue. The issue is that there is no a clear case 
for e Swiss franc to come along in the relatively short period of time. Another thing to come out of Switzerland, of course, is the SIX digital exchange that's yes. being created by SIX. How do you think that this could shift the way we think about tokenized assets in our daily lives? Well, I mean, more than anything, it brings a tremendous efficiency gains. It brings transparency to the markets. It, I think it, it's a, a very important, a, a, I would say, strengthening of the market infrastructure that is out there. Therefore, I think that SIX is being a leader in many aspects, and we certainly support all what they're doing. Let's broaden the conversation out now to stable coins. That's been quite a big focus mm -hmm. of the BIS, especially over the past couple of months. And I mm -hmm. say this because the Libra project has called Geneva home. Where does the BIS stand right now on the Libra project? Well, I mean, certainly uh, it's a very uh, provocative a proposition and provocative in a positive way. <laughs> it really has forced us all to think about it. I think what is very, very, I would say, commendable about this effort uh, is the boldness of it. <laughs> and the boldness of, of it is to come with the global currency. Now, again, as I was saying at the beginning of this conversation, the case needs to be, need, needs to be made and also the, you know, also this aspect that you were asking if technology really makes money. And this is again a confirmation that technology per se doesn't make a, a, a fiat inadequate money and therefore the case for it needs to be made. Uh, at this stage, my own, my, own, my own assessment and I would say the assessment of the BIS is that we have today something that works very well, that is fiat currency. Now, why do we need to come with another, I would say, a, another a technologically manufactured coin that basically is importing its value from a coin that already exists? So what is the real value added of stable coin, in, 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 in particular in Libra? And my sense is that it's not a big value added. What really is worthwhile to pursue is the application of technology for very specific objectives. And the objectives that they have put on the table, and I really commend them, is to use our, the best of technology and the best of our imagination and our research to bring down uh, cross-border payment costs mm -hmm. and to uh, promote financial inclusion. Many aspects of their proposal are very, very valuable. And I think that, that the attention should go towards those goals. But the application towards stable currency or stable coin is probably not the best direction of the application of these new technologies. So at the moment, Libra still needs to make a better case to convince you and the BIS as an entity. Absolutely. So where do you see the standard before such a project can have have its legs and take off the ground? Well, I mean, first of all, it's important that, that also we can look under the hood of what the Libra is. Uh, because Have you uh, had a chance? We haven't <laughs> yet. <laughs> uh, so I think that's, that's, that's one important aspect. A uh, second very important, uh, a second, I would say, a very important aspect is uh, everything that has to do with AML, AML CFT. I think, and you know your client, I think that's a, a big hurdle. And any project in the, of this dimension needs to certainly to comply, to comply with, with those aspects. In September, you hosted the meeting and part of the, the uh, meeting members was the Libra Associ Association as well. Can you give us an idea of what went on behind those scenes? Well, I mean, I think what went behind the scenes is, is is, uh, I would say, a very lively debate, very lively conversation. But more than anything, I think that it uh, exemplifies what needs to happen as we move forward. I would say one of the very important outcomes of that is that as we think about the future of the financial system, of the payment system, what works the best, and it proves mm -hmm. to be today the best, is private-public partnerships. Is what should it be, be the private sector innovators do and how can they build on the public infrastructures 
and uh, those aspects of the financial system that works well. I think to build further that public-private uh, uh, partnership is important. I think also what was really worthwhile is to bring together public and private sectors and debate the pros and cons of the different proposals. A, a final conclusion was not reached, but certainly very positive aspects were identified there just be, because of the dialogue that took place. Of course, these conversations are still continuing. And if we could just quickly wrap up, there's so much talk about stable coins overall. At the moment, do you see more risk or more opportunity behind them? Well, more than anything is, is what do we understand by stable coins and what is the application of them? We already have stable coins that work. I mean, st a stable coin might be the mileage that you get in your frequent flyer account <laughs> in whatever airline you have. That, that can be sort of a stable coin. Uh, the point is, and, and also stable coins, for example, are used to make more efficient uh, some settlement systems. Now, it has a very clear application uh, it's, it's I, I, would, I would say, contained in, into itself. What is new about stablecoin and what is new about Libra is the boldness of the proposal to come with a global currency. That's what is bold, and therefore, to get there, really get, uh, the really, if A, we first have to really make sure that we need that. Second, the technological and economic challenges of it, the logic of it, still are huge. And we really need to work more in that direction. Mr. Carson, thank you very much. Thank you. A real pleasure to be with you. Mm -hmm.